Now I would request our Rotarian Sunu Chaudhary to please introduce the speaker. Sunu Chaudhary, please, you're on the dais. Good evening, friends. It gives me immense pleasure to introduce to you all Mr. Hariharan Ayer, who is multifaceted personality and combined a number of outstanding talents with the intent of making difference to people's living and resultant life. He has been pursuing his vision of reaching out to a large number of people for their welfare and creating a world-class training organization. And for that, he bid goodbye to his last lucrative corporate job with Max New York Life Insurance, where he was a zonal tra training head and was managing over 100 trainers. He is founder of Hariharan School of Success Education, which he established in 2009. Mr. Hariharan is popularly known as Under Trainer due to his entertaining style of speaking and training. He started his training, he started his training journey as a public speaking trainer in the late 80s where, while he was still in college. He has been involved as a consultant with organizations like Unique Mercantile and ITM Group of Institution. Mr. Hariharan is seasoned development professional with over 25 years of training experience. He has conducted training sessions in over 50 cities in India, as also in Dubai and Nepal. He is also postgraduate in politics and was an ex-journalist with reputed newspapers like uh, Business Standard and Financial Express. He is a brilliant writer with several books to his name of you. Honey, I Love Money, Success and You, Dear Diksha, a father to his teenage daughter. He sold it I didn't buy it. Yes, friends, that's not all. Mr. Hariharan is a grand master of Reiki, a science of spiritual healing, and he has been offering Reiki to needy person. In recognition of his outstanding services to human beings, Mr. Hariharan was conferred upon with Rex Karmavi Global Fellowship by International Confederation of NGOs in February 2014. And it was further followed by another star, that is Karambi Chakra, in March 2015. He is also associated with he is also associated with Rex Karmavi speakers, where the members share their real life stories to inspire fellow members to gather courage and patience to enjoy a new dawn of life. So friends, may I now introduce Mr. Hariharan in person. Please give him a big round of applause. Thank you.
here you find 70,000 after every one kilometer. So <laughs> that's the most interesting aspect of being in India. Right. Uh, I, uh, PUC, I'm always fascinated by my introduction uh, because that's the only time you feel good about yourself. <laughs> because somebody has a perception that you are doing a great job and that is, and sometimes they wonder whether what is reality and what is perception. And every time I'm given such a glorious introduction, I always tell the audience I wish my wife was here. They said, the only way to ensure that is to get her next time. So, so from now onwards, what I started doing is I told her, come and listen to what people say about your husband. You know? <laughs> so uh, it, it's, a, it's, it's really a delight to be here today. I mean, thank you so much. Uh, and it's a real pleasure. Uh, just that I'm just wondering uh, that at the topic that is given to me, which is about, it's a sales topic. So it's about he sold it, I did not buy it. It's basically it concerns a book that I have written uh, with the same title called He Sold It, I Did Not Buy It. And this was written about uh, four to five years back uh, after I had left Max New York Life and I was kind of experimenting with my entrepreneurial journey. So when you don't have a lot of work, you do two things. You sing for a longer time in the bathroom and you get a lot of time to reflect on what is to be done and you start writing. So, so at the beginning of, your entrepreneurial, of my entrepreneurial journey, there was a little bit of more time in my hand because I was just testing waters. So that was the time when I wrote this book. And very interestingly, I started my career as a journalist and I've never done selling in my life. But when I joined Max New York Life in 2004, they picked me up as a sales trainer. And I've always done certain things which I never believed that I could ever do. And this was just one of those things that I did in life. And I always wondered why did they select me as a sales trainer? Because most of my colleagues were successful sales people who got into training, either because they were tired of selling or maybe their bosses were tired of their selling and, and they packed them off to training. But I was one of the very few people in the organization who was picked up to do sales training, maybe because they thought I speak well, but they don't realize that generally you speak very well outside the house after 20 years of marriage. You know? so. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and you know that what risk I am taking today, right now. So, uh, so I wrote this book uh, essentially with two objectives. Uh, one was, I just wanted to bring out the wonderful idea about selling out of my system, put it all in a document and say that, okay, this is what I know about sales. And secondly, I just thought that in our country, you would agree that none of us ever grew up thinking that one day I will become a salesman. Like when we are children, my father asks us, what will you become? And they always tell you to become what they could not become in life. You know? And most parents, they would have wanted to become a doctor or an engineer uh, or a pilot, for example. Or if they became a doctor, they said you become a doctor. Or if they could not become a doctor, they still said you become a doctor. And no child ever dreamt in his life of putting his hand up and saying that, Daddy, I actually want you to be a salesman. You know, so nobody in this country actually grows up, or maybe in the world also, grows up thinking that I actually want to become a, a salesman. But over the years, there's something I realized, that the most successful people in life, and not only in terms of money, of course, in terms of money also, but uh, not only in terms of money, I also realized that some of the most successful and evolved people in life are people who have done sales. And so I really want to share with you what are the five great advantages of being a salesperson. I don't know if any of you in the audience is actually done selling or you are part of a business or you're running an entrepreneurial organization. Uh, if you're an entrepreneur, yes, you do selling every day. Uh, but I find that sales is the most fundamental skill that is required for anybody in life to be successful. For example, even to get married, you know, the traditional uh, the most traditional way of marriage in our country is still the arranged marriage system. And what is arranged marriage all about? It's all about selling. You know, so there is a reference, there is a recommendation, there is a prospecting. <laughs> so, so you actually prospect. Uh, so you give an ad and you say that, and, and you have a target segment. You say that uh, I want to marry a Kaisa Brahmin from this particular location in this particular gali near this particular temple. I mean, the target segment is so beautifully defined. Now, even if you get into a love marriage, it, it involves a tremendous amount of selling. You know? So, so sales is everywhere. We all grow up 
you know, we all grow up with the idea of selling. It is just that we have a mindset which says that we should not do selling and we are all brought up with a very typical mindset where if there was a Eureka folk salesman who knocked on my door and I would first ask, who are you? So he would say, my salesman who will first put the chain and open the door. We are so afraid of sex people. And the poor guy would ask for a glass of water and we would say that, sorry boss, Baju would say, ja ke pani pi lena. Mere ghar pe <laughs> right? So, but over the years, I realized that this mindset, uh, uh, and I'm not commenting about whether it's right or wrong, but I'm just saying that this mindset is actually stopping people from getting into probably one of the world's most beautiful professions. And it is definitely one of the most, uh, it is one of the most old professions in the world. So it is one of the oldest professions in the world. And we all are salespeople, aren't we? We all sell every day. We either sell an idea, or we sell a product, or we sell a service. So for example, if my child is not studying, so the father or the mother will go to the child and say that, Beta, char ta homer kar lena, tumko chocolate milega. What am I doing? I am executing a sales process then. And the child says, okay, I will get you 90% in 10 standard, but I want to see the bicycle next to my uh, house as soon as the result comes. So she is also, he or she is also getting into a negotiation. So we all are sales people. What does a homemaker do? What does a housewife do when she goes to uh, the vendor to buy fruits or vegetables? She is getting into a, into a negotiation. And she calls up, if she is a housewife, she will call up her husband and say, Aaj ghar aoge, to do gulab jamun milenge. So, so that's an incentive that she's throwing at the husband. And I don't know about other husbands, but I, I'm delighted with Gulab Jamun any time of the day. So, so where I'm coming from, friends, is very simple. Sales is a very, very powerful profession. And uh, what I've tried to do in the book, actually, is that I have written 21 commandments of selling. What are the 21 commandments or 21 ideas or principles which can make you a good sales person? Now, I'm not saying that this book is entirely relevant or the ideas in this book are relevant to this particular audience, but I think it would be a good opportunity for you to just read it maybe and just share those ideas with the younger generation, within your family, within your circle that you operate in. Because what I have seen, because I used to train agents, and you understand that uh, the one of the, the one community which we always try to run away from is a life insurance agent. And after some time, the life insurance agent also runs away from everybody. You know? so, so typically what happens is this is one of the most difficult things to sell in this world. And it is, however, having said this, what I saw in my experience as a sales trainer now for the last 12 to 13 years is that I have never seen life change of an ordinary person faster than in the selling profession. So, for example, and I have nothing against any other profession, every profession is great, every profession is required, but not everybody can become a pilot, right? Not everybody can become an MBA, not everybody can become a chartered accountant, because it requires a certain level of intelligence, and more than intelligence, you should have the ability to study art, and for long hours. Not everybody can become a microbiologist, for example, not everybody can become an engineer, but the best part about selling is, whatever your qualification, it doesn't matter, you can become a salesperson. And the best part about selling is it doesn't matter. They, no, no company asks you what's your age. Are you can you do selling at this age? I have seen retired people become rich after getting into the sales profession, after having served in organizations for you know 30, 40 years, and suddenly their life has changed in the matter of few months or a couple of years. I have seen 25 year olds become rich in just a couple of years or in two to three years by getting into the sales profession, and they're not very highly qualified. And very interesting data that, uh, that that is available for all of us to understand. And this is very striking. And it's also has shown the importance of financial education in our life. It is so striking that 90% of the wealth in this world is controlled by 10% people in the world. 90% of the wealth is controlled by 10% people. And the 10% of the wealth, 10% people have 90% of the wealth. And 90% uh, uh, people are helping transfer the 90% wealth to 10% people. So it's a 90-10 uh, formula. And what is most interesting about this 10% or 90% of the wealth are most of them are school dropouts. Most of them are did not attend college. Uh, uh, and I'm not saying this, that people should not go to college or they should not get degrees. I'm just giving the perspective here. So you take any name, for example, Steve Jobs. You take the name of uh, Dhirubhai Ambani. You take 
take uh, anybody. I mean, you take Michael Dell, for example. So there are so many great people, Bill Gates, for example. You know, so they are not the right examples as far as academic learning is concerned, but they are a fantastic example in terms of continuous learning is concerned. So while we should encourage our students and our children to pick up great degrees, that is equally important in life. I mean, somebody, we need good scientists in our country, we need good doctors, we need good engineers, we need good intellectuals. For that, you need academic study. But at the same time, we need to understand the critical difference between education and learning. Education is something which I pick up once in a while. So I pick up a degree, I do my 10th, I do my 12th, I do a BCom, an MCom, I do an engineering course, I do a postgraduate course, and I pick up a certification from IIM, so on and so forth. It's once in a while, but learning is something we have to do every single day of our life. So Henry Ford, for example, who himself was a fourth standard school dropout, and he created the world's first mega automobile company in the world. And he was asked a question, what is the difference between a young person and an old person? He very simply said, if you have stopped learning at 20, you are old, and if you have you continued to learn at 80, you are young. So at the best part about my profession is that I have to learn every day. So if I have to come here and deliver a talk, I have to first learn myself. I have to prepare for it. And that's the best part about my profession. Okay? And my dream is to create more excellent trainers and to create more excellent salespeople. So, Fundamentally, I would like to define the word sales itself and give it five different qualities. So there are five alphabets in the word sales. It is S, A, L, E, and, and S. So the most important thing to understand is the first S. We all want to be successful in life. Right? How many of us would like to be successful in life? And I know all of you are already successful, but anybody would drag if you can become more successful? No? <laughs> I'm sure. We all want to be more successful in life, right? Yeah, and I love this audience for their energy, right? So, we all want to be more successful in life. And how many of you also want to be a little bit more comfortable in life? We all want to be more comfortable in life. Now, that is where, unfortunately, the tragedy is. And I always like tell, uh, you know, it's an old, uh, happily married kind of a statement. You can either be happy or you can be married. It's just a joke, I know that. <laughs> but, so you can either be comfortable or you can be, you can be successful. And it doesn't matter what is the level of success you have attained in your life, what is your age, what is your experience, every single new morning is a new day in our life and it erases whatever we did yesterday. And we have to start all over again. So I always tell people who are a little disappointed in life sometimes, you uh, know, and uh, I tell them, don't worry, because life begins at 40. And this is very important to understand that one of the, so S for success. So one of the important things in the success formula uh, is to understand that comfort will never create success and successful people are never comfortable. They are always comfortable being uncomfortable. Please go back and train your students and your children about this. That if you want to stand out in the crowd, you have to burn the midnight oil more than the other guy. That's the only difference. It's not about intelligence. Because in today's world, everybody is intelligent because of Google and WhatsApp and Facebook. And everybody is a motivational speaker today. You know, morning 6 o'clock to night 12 o'clock, you'll get the same four messages in four different WhatsApp groups. The whole country is on a motivation trip. And add to that, Prime Minister Narendra Modi is encouraging this motivation by role modeling that. You know, everybody wants to become the next Modi and the next speaker. So it is important to understand that success does never comes from comfort. That is one. Second is, life begins at 40. And, I'm a, and it is also a bit of consolation for me because I am going to be 47 day after tomorrow. So it's also my birthday this month, sir. Thank you so oh, much. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it is the best way to get some uh, happy birthdays by announcing it in public. So, you know, and, and, and I always believe that life begins at 40. Why? Because people ask me, what's your age every birthday? And I always tell them, so day after tomorrow, I have a standard dialogue which is ready. I am going to tell them, life begins at 40, so I am 7. And, and trust me, just this cheating that you do with your mental and physical self is just amazing. You suddenly start feeling, maybe not 7, but at least 17. You know, or maybe 27, which is also a great number to have in life. So why life begins at 40 is because the first 20 years you don't know what happened to you. You know, and life was beautiful. Everything was wonderful. 
you were provided with everything. And the next 20 years, you wondered why this is happening to you. You know, in the first 20 years, you didn't know what happened to you. And then in the next 20 years, you wondered why only me. You know, and all the big tragedies happen in life in these 20 years. You know, and I want to ask, what is the first big tragedy, sir, you face after 20 years in your life? And nobody in, the, in all my talks has ever said any answer besides marriage. <laughs> You know, so, so, so there's a lot of experimentation that happens in these 20 years. Career, love, marriage, relationships, education. Only after the next 20 years and when you're 40, you have experienced the beauty of life and you have experienced the pain of life. You actually become a more balanced person. And you develop a certain sense of uh, maturity in your life. And if you see, all great performers and great people have achieved great things. They all have achieved after the age of 40, including Mahatma Gandhi. He launched the campaign against the British uh, from South Africa after he turned 40. So you will find a lot of great businesses flowering after 40. You will find a lot of people flowering in their careers after 40. I mean, you look at Anil Kapoor today, for our example, from Bollywood. I mean, he is younger than what he was when he was 30 years old. You know, and, I, and it's got nothing to do with uh, him dyeing the hair. <laughs> that is just one part of the story. But the youthfulness with which he is acting. Look at Amitabh Bachchan, for example. He is going to be turning 75 very soon. But I think he is going to beat all the youngsters uh, in the race. Uh, just amazing energy. Because after 40, two things happen. One, you realize that you have wasted your 40 years. So, abhi to kuch karo. <laughs> because time is running off. <laughs> and, and secondly, secondly, you know, uh, like Sunil Gavaskar says, 40 is the beginning of the youth of old age. You know, so, uh, so after 40, you are running, racing against time. And secondly, you also are more mature and you have a larger purpose built into your life. So as for success, and you can never be successful in life unless there is a salesperson in your life. Now, even if you are a successful employee, obviously you are part of a business in an organization and somebody is doing some selling. Because the business is growing, my career is growing. So there can be no success in this world without sales. A for attitude. The most important thing in the world today is attitude. If you ask me, what is the differentiator in today's world? Is it intelligence? Like when I was growing up in the 80s, they said IQ test. I still have a fear for an IQ test. I don't think I'll clear an IQ test, an intelligence quotient test, because I don't understand the questions at all. And when I talk to youngsters, I always tell them, if I was told something in 1980, I would understand it in 1981. My generation was like that. You know, we used to take a lot of time to understand. Today, even before you have told the children, know what you are trying to say. And they have re-educated you on how wrong you were in whatever you were trying to say. You know, so today, there is a very little gap between intelligence and talent. And talent is the most useless thing in today's world. I'm sorry to say this, but it is the most useless thing in today's world because everybody is talented. And everybody is more talented than you. If you think you can sing a great song at age 10, there are other 10 years old who can sing better than you on reality shows. But what differentiates today is attitude. Because I go to talk to a lot of youngsters and they have such an attitude that, you know, and they think attitude is, I have got attitude. I tell the boss, that is not attitude. Attitude is about being humble. It's about being responsive. It's about having the ability to handle difficult situations. I love this generation. Trust me, we have an 18 year old daughter. She's almost 18 and we love her and we love this generation. But one thing that worries me about this generation is that they don't have the ability to accept difficult situations because everything is coming so easily to them. And they don't understand the word struggle at all. They, for them, that does not exist in the dictionary. There is nothing called struggle. There is only success. So the most important thing is attitude. Then L is learning. The more you earn, the more you learn, the more you will earn simply because the word earn is within the word learn. A lot of people tell me that the way to become rich in life is to work hard and to work smart. I tell them sometimes you don't understand the thin line of difference between smart and over smart. A lot of people try to become rich by becoming over smart. And one of the other things that I find in today's world and not only in today's generation is the, is the diminishing value of hard work. Everybody wants things like this. And I tell people about world, the world, life is not WhatsApp. That message, Veja or Vapajya. You know, it, it doesn't work like that. So L is for learning. Continuous learning. The more you learn, whether you earn or not, you will earn something else which will make you feel really good about yourself. And you will get tremendous perspective. It will broaden your horizons. 
That's why reading habit is extremely critical. Then ease for entrepreneurship. I think today's world, if, yeah, I, I, please go back and encourage uh, uh, people in your circle to become entrepreneurs because India is the place where entrepreneurship is going to flourish for the next 20, 25 years. This is the most awesome country to be living in today. You know, people are running away from foreign countries and trying to come here and we still have a generation which wants to go and settle abroad. And that's a sad thing because I think this is the most happening country in the world. Obama wants to settle in India, I mean, let me tell you. You know, he would love to come to India and be here. America is looking at India all the time. UK is looking at India all the time. This is the blessings of our, all our gurus in the so, much, so many hundred years. You know, that today we are on the verge, maybe in the next 10 to 15 years, we will be the kind of economic superpower this world has ever seen. And this is the most awesome country to be. It's also the safest place to be in today. <laughs> you know, you travel worldwide, people are after you, but India is also one of the most safe places to be in. So E for entrepreneurship, and selling is all about entrepreneurship. Anybody wants to be an entrepreneur, you must pick up the nuances of selling. And finally, the S is for skills. One of the things that I discovered in the sales journey was that selling enhances not only your selling skill, but actually it enhances a lot of other skills. For example, it enhances your communication skills. It enhances your body language. It enhances your grooming. It makes you learn. You have to do research about a particular company before you go and meet people. It, it, and more than anything, sales teaches you to be persistent. You know, sales teaches you to be, it teaches you to be persistent. Uh, I would like to share one beautiful shairi here which defines the defines persistence because this is a very powerful shari it says that aaj fir badalon ne sajish ki jahan mera ghar tha wahi barish ki aaj fir badalon ne sajish ki jahan mera ghar tha wahi barish ki agar falak ko zid hai bijliyan girane ki agar falak ko zid hai bijliyan girane ki to hame bhi zid hai wahi par ashiya banane ki and I have found that what defines successful people and what differentiates them from the not so successful people. It is not intelligence, it is not knowledge, it is maybe not even skills, it is definitely not talent. The most important thing is the ability to hang in there, the ability to be persistent, the ability to not give up. I was reading, the, I am a great fan of Bollywood and I, one thing which was missed out in my introduction I think was I am a qualified, trained, professional bathroom singer with an experience of more than 40 years singing in the bathroom. Now don't ask me why I have not reached the studios <laughs> and become a playback singer. So I am going to risk singing a couple of lines when I am when ending my talk. So you, I, I would want you guys to join me and we can have some fun together. Okay. So. Uh, <coughs> And let, let me tell you that my wife was, did not marry me because she liked my singing. She had not heard me singing before marrying me. So she had different perceptions. <laughs> okay. So where I'm coming from, friends, is this. Persistence, to me, is the most important quality for success. You may not be highly talented. You may not have a great upbringing. You may not belong to a great, uh, rich and successful khandan. You may not have a great background. But if you have decided that, boss, I ko ye karna hai. Aur ye main karega, kuch bhi ho jai. I'm going to stick it out. I'm going to fight it out. And I was reading about Shami Kapoor, I was referring to Bollywood, I was reading the biography of Shami Kapoor sometime back by this great writer called Rob Hammer, who was the editor of Philip Fair. And Shami Kapoor, which is such an amazing, we all think he's such a great superstar. Nobody knows, very few people know, he had 20 flops before his first mega hit, which was Tumsa Nahi Dekha. You know, somewhere in the year 1957 or 58. And he was on the verge of quitting film industry and going and working in some tea estate in the south. This is what he told his wife. Ki main film aur main tea estate mein jake, main kuch so his first wife, Gita Bali, had a major role in reshaping and reinventing Shami Kapoor. And because of that one film, Tumsa Nahi Deka, he went on to later on become one of India's greatest game changers in the world of Hindi films. And but how many flops did he have? People see the hit. You know, it's the iceberg theory. I only see the ice on top. I see the beautiful iceberg. I don't see all the struggle that's below the water. And Shami Kapoor had 19 failures, 19 rejections, 
before and he almost quit the film industry before he went on to become one of India's greatest game changers in the history of Hollywood. So the most important thing is persistence. And this is also a skill I feel. You know, you know, it's a soft skill where you need to have the ability to stick it out. So if ever you have disappointments in life, but you are clear this is what I want to do, please, please don't give up because you could be the next Shami Kapoor in this world. You know, please do not give up because that's the power of staying persistent. Because when you are persistent, God gets bored with your failure. And he says, <laughs>
know, it has been an absolutely awesome experience meeting all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much and God bless you. Mr. Hiram, thank you for such a stimulating talk with examples, live examples. Uh, you talked about Shami Kapoor, I can also mention one more Bollywood star, that was Amitabh Bachchan. I think he also had a string of props before he became a big success. Uh, okay, I don't, I don't have the numbers, but yeah, it took much time. Okay, yeah, second phase. He did it twice now. Okay. Sir, it's a pleasure to have you in our club and uh, uh, we have a token of appreciation for you. Please do accept that.
which came up on a personality culture sank as quickly as the personality sank. Amitabh Bachchan, ABCL, fantastic example. It was entirely dependent on him or not on systems and processes. So the company collapsed. You know, so, so you need systems. So I may be a great talker, but I need a system, which is very important. Yes. You want to say a lot of people don't buy. Yeah. Very close call. I think it, it's not about not. It's not just about going wrong. Yeah. So they may not have a need for it. And one of the things sales teaches you to accept rejections. It, it makes you a little. Uh, I mean, it hurts. It definitely hurts. But over a period of time, you start realizing that people are not rejecting you, but they're rejecting their need or their product. They don't have a need for it. Uh, and yes, many people also reject you maybe because of your behavior or an unprofessional approach. So I mean, it's a combination of both the factors. Yes, sir. Suggestions that uh, when can we have the picnic, like uh, sometime in September or October, or whatever. I would like to now request uh, Mr. Ashok Agarwal to please give the word of thanks.
to success. I know that we are waiting for dinner, and you want that I should speak less. So I would request all of you to please join your hand together to propose a vote of thanks. I think vote of thanks to Mr. Thank you.